Continuing our conversation of these explicit contracts and these client libraries, I want you to beware of leaky RPC-like abstractions. A lot of people really love these and they embrace them, but these also have some problems with them. So what am I talking about here? What I'm talking about is programmers like to have a simple life. I mean, we all do. And so to simplify programming, lots of different technologies are available that try to map method calls into network requests. In other words, it looks like you're making a method call, but in reality, this is a wrapper or a technology that is a, t turning that method call into a network request underneath the covers. And examples of these, of which there are many, is RPC, RMI, CORBA, Distributed Com, Windows Communication Foundation, I mean, just to name a few. But there's a ton of these, and there's like a new one every month on these things. In my experience, a lot of times these things do not work. And they do not, or they might work initially, but they don't work well in the long run. And the reason is because of, well, lots of reasons. So let's walk through some of those. The first is the network fallacies. You'll remember I started this section by talking about the eight network fallacies. So because a lot of these APIs, they don't do retries for you. They don't support timeouts. They don't support circuit breakers. And these are things you really want when you're making network communication in this distributed cloud world. Also, you want to avoid chatty methods where you make lots of little requests to a server. Those introduce a lot of latency and they hurt performance a lot and they put a lot of congestion on the wire. It is better to have more chunky conversations between a client and a server, where the client says to the server, I want a big chunk of data. And then the server sends that chunk, then the client processes it for a while. Then it goes back to the server, says, I want a chunk of data. Gets another chunk, processes it for a while. As opposed to, give me a piece of data, let me process it. Give me a piece of data, let me process it. That latter scenario is much worse. The chunky is much better. Um, these RPC-like abstractions have issues about language-specific data type conversions. I already gave some examples about date times or nullable data types and generics. And here I mentioned also dates and times and durations of things. These are frequently different data types in different languages. They may not work the same way. Just whether null is allowed or not is different between languages. Versioning. When you create these uh, wrapper technologies, these RPC technologies, which version of an API are they going to call internally? Version 1, uh, the December 7th, uh, 2016 version? You know, how do you know which version it's going to call? Maybe inside your program, at one place in your code, you want to call the version 1 of the API. Maybe at a different place in your program, you want to call the version 2 API. A lot of times, these RPC abstraction things, they don't give you that kind of flexibility there. Um, authentication, how do you handle expiring tokens? A lot of times, people are using things like OAuth today for the client to authenticate with the server. These tokens expire after a certain period of time, let's say 60 minutes. So how do you hand this token off to this RPC mechanism? How does the RPC mechanism refresh that token periodically before making a request out to a server? A lot of times that's not taken care of in the RPC mechanism. And then, of course, logging. Um, if you send a lot of requests as query parameters, if you're doing HTTP for the communication protocol, if you send a lot of requests with query parameters, uh, are on the URL, a lot of times that URL gets logged on the server. But if you put some of the information in as headers, or you put some of the information in as the payload, a lot of times that information does not get logged into a log on the server, because the payload information tends to be too big and it would really pollute the log with a lot of extraneous stuff. So when you use these RPC mechanisms, you don't necessarily know what's coming in as a query parameter, what's coming in as part of the URL, what's coming in as a header, what's coming in as a payload, and how to deal with those things. You have less control over it. So, um, and then I mentioned again that the uh, server's clocks are not absolutely synchronized with each other. That can cause skewing problems when you're looking at logs that are happening from clients and multiple servers.